It is the year 1541, and the Incan Empire has fallen. A large expedition party is being gathered in the city of Quito, modern Ecuador. This expedition, led by conqueror of the Incan Empire, Francisco Pizarro's half-brother, Gonzalo Pizarro, included over 200 Spanish conquistadors and around 4,000 Native American prisoners. Francisco de Oriana had missed the start of the expedition while scrambling to get his affairs in order and gathering soldiers, but caught up with Pizarro to join him as second in command. This expedition was to cross the mountains of the Andes and descend into the jungle below, which many warned Oriana not to go out of danger. The goal was to find the fabled city of gold, El Dorado, or the Pais de la Canela, or Land of Cinnamon. However, upon reaching the jungle, no cinnamon or gold would be found, only death and despair. Of the thousands that left for the Amazon, almost three-fourths of the expedition died or deserted from starvation, disease, and the jungle environment. Pizarro dispatched Oriana and about 60 men down the Napo River in December to find any food, with some so weak they crawled on all fours through the jungle. However, Oriana decided to abandon Pizarro and find his own way down the river. Oriana sent a boat back to Pizarro to declare his intentions. Thus, Pizarro decided to abandon his expedition and began a campaign to undermine Oriana's reputation upon stumbling out of the jungle. Oriana and his men, upon finding a native village and food, decided instead of making the long, difficult trek upriver to go downriver instead. Oriana wanted to return to Pizarro, but his men threatened a mutiny should he decide on that course. In June of 1542, Oriana reached the mighty Rio Negro, which Oriana named and flows into the Amazon. Oriana's group faced constant attack from the Amukuas along the Napo, and this Native American onslaught would not let up. Along the Amazon, Oriana and his men fought a skirmish against the Machiparo and were chased downstream. Dominican friar Gaspar de Carvajal, who accompanied Oriana, described places so well populated that the Spanish could not sleep on land out of danger. When the conquistadors did make landfall, they found, quote, fine highways and many roads leading into the jungle, which Carvajal described as like royal highways and wider. During one battle against the Tapuyas, women and men fought alongside each other, leading Oriana to describe the river as that of Amazons, based on the Greek legends of a civilization of warrior women. In the Brazilian state of Para, around 54 degrees longitude, Oriana and his men stopped for 18 days to repair their handmade ships and assess their seaworthiness. The expedition reached the mouth of the Amazon River on August 26, 1542, and set sail westward for Capagua Island, off the coast of Venezuela, reaching the island on September 11th. From Capagua, Oriana returned to Spain to obtain governorship over the new lands he discovered, which he named New Andalusia. Oriana first reached Portugal, where the king, Jao III, welcomed him, offering Oriana another expedition under a Portuguese flag, to which Oriana refused, citing the division outlined in the Treaty of Tordesillas, only giving Portugal the mouth of the Amazon River, and Spain the vast interior of the continent. Upon returning to Spain, Oriana negotiated for nine months before finally being appointed governor of New Andalusia by King Charles I in February of 1544. Oriana then obtained a commission to conquer and settle the region. Oriana left for a second expedition on May 11, 1545, after months of preparation hassled by unpaid debts, spies from Portugal, and squabbling in Oriana's personal life, with Oriana taking a very young and poor wife he intended to bring along long, making raising funds far harder. In the Cape Verde Islands, 98 men died in an epidemic and 50 to 60 deserted. During the Atlantic crossing, one of his ships became separated and was never seen again, losing a further 77 men and 11 horses of the 300 men and 24 horses he had initially brought. Upon reaching the mouth of the Amazon in December of 1545, he only had two ships, 11 skinny horses, and less than 100 men left in his party.
Despite friendly natives offering a chance to rest and build their riverboats, Oriana decided to sail 300 miles inland, then make camp and build riverboats. The party camped until March, suffering from starvation and under siege by hostile natives. The party cannibalized one of their ships and were forced to eat their dogs and horses. 57 more men died in this time. Oriana sent a riverboat off to find food, but it returned with no bounty and several dead of starvation or skirmishes with the natives. The party set off back for the mouth of the river, but the ship wrecked on a riverbank after traveling 75 miles. Oriana took off with the riverboat, but found nothing and returned to his shipwrecked men in poor shape both physically and mentally. At least 17 of the survivors were wounded by arrows. Oriana tried again to go down the river, leaving several at the shipwreck but died along the way. His wife buried him on the shores of the Amazon. With Oriana's widow, the survivors made it to the mouth of the river and rode the current to Margarita Island, west of Trinidad. The 28 to 30 men left at the shipwreck began building a new boat, which was leaky and crude. The party sailed downriver, finding no signs of Oriana. Ten of the men jumped ship, preferring to test their luck with the natives over a leaking boat. The 18 survivors reached Margarita Island in late November, reuniting with Oriana's wife and the other survivors. Oriana's expeditions documented a large Native American population and vast settlements. However, scholars in the 19th and early 20th centuries would dismiss the accounts of the conquistadors as, quote, fantasy and exaggeration, saying no significant human presence could have resided in the Amazon. However, many of the hallmarks of complex civilizations have been found by modern archaeologists, and it is now believed that large complex civilizations did exist in the Amazon. It is estimated that around 5 million or more Native Americans lived in the region at European contact, but the spread of smallpox and other European diseases caused an apocalypse, reducing these civilizations to hunter-gatherer societies. By 1900, only 1 million Native Americans lived in the Amazon, and by 1980s, it was less than 200,000.